uh, this is from the uh, morning, uh, the New York Times newsletter that I get. Uh, it's authored by this David uh, Leonhardt guy. He says, good morning. Are Democrats again about to be disappointed by overly optimistic polling? Now, he's talking about uh, 2022 as we look ahead. As you know, Democrats supposedly got a big uh, bounce, uh, ironically, about this uh, Roe v. Wade thing. And it just, it's reflected in polling. But he's saying the final polls in the 2020 presidential election overstated Joe Biden's strength, especially in a handful of states. The polls reported that Biden had a small lead in North Carolina. And, uh, you've seen Matthew Ho on my show. He's running for Senate in North Carolina. But he lost the state to Donald Trump. Now, the polls also showed Biden running comfortably ahead in Wisconsin, yet he won it by less than a percentage point. In Ohio, the polls pointed to a tight race. Instead, Trump won it easily. So what about these polls? What the hell's up with this? In each of these states and some others, pollsters failed to reach a representative sample of voters. One factor seems to be that Republican voters are more skeptical of mainstream institutions and are less willing to respond to a survey. Now, this gets to what the doc and I have talked about. Doc, you've heard me mention this before. If somebody calls on the phone and a Republican answers and you say, well, I'm with uh, the New York Times. We're taking a poll on the uh, president. Uh, OK, they're either going to screw with that person or they're not going to participate or whatever. And it depends on where you're calling, obviously. But I think that's what happens with this polling a lot. And my take on it is I don't think we can ever trust polls again because people are of that mind. Well, that's true. And and we know that it's become more difficult to get good random samples or uh, actually proportional samples of the American voting public because, you know, we used to do it by calling people in their homes on their phone right during dinner time. Now people don't have phones at home anymore and they're wandering around the mall or, or not, maybe not the mall, but the big box store or Home Depot or somewhere with their smartphones. And those are harder to poll. And so they've had to try to move to things like internet polling, which I think you know some of the sampling there isn't very good. Um, and let me also add what the consequences are of those polls, which is, if people think that Bullduck is really too too extreme in New Hampshire, uh, and they keep saying that in the media in New Hampshire, the national media, everybody, it means a lot of Democrats are not going to bother to vote because they're going to go, well, this guy is never going to win. And uh, Maggie Hassan, the current senator uh, who is up for re-election, a Democrat, is going to easily win it because Bullduck is too conservative. If people feel that way because the polls have kind of led them, you know, to sort of be uh, lazy about voting, then he'll win. Oh, God. Yeah, it affects and I... voting. Polls affect voting. I've always said I'm not really sure we should allow polling because polling is not a neutral uh, reporting phenomenon. Polling has enormous consequences for actual behavior uh, in society. Uh, but, yeah, but I, I, I can Gallup, see that argument. Gallup called, called me, Gallup called me and said, shit, you know, Schmidt, you shut up. <laughs> you know, you're going to continue polling. So yeah, it's a huge it, industry. Yeah, that, it's a big, big, big. business. People, people don't uh, understand or realize that. But to the doc's point, I think, well, that's crazy. Well, if they're not accurate, what the hell? If And they're affecting outcomes and elections the way that he's talking about. They yeah. may be doing more harm than good. 